Happy Mother's Day. Oh, come on. I'm going to give you another chance. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. We, w we welcome you this morning. Those that are viewing online, thank you for tuning in this morning. Would you all stand with us this morning? We have guests already with us this morning, and let's just give them a hand. Edward David and Jane and all the others here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you and we worship you this morning. We thank you, God, because you're so good. You're so wonderful. You are our hope and our peace in this time that we live. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We worship you and we praise you. This morning, my mind was directed to uh, when the children of Israel gathered around Mount Sinai, the mountain quaked. It was covered with fire and smoke, and if you touched it, you died. Thankful for Mount Calvary this morning. Amen. That's the mountain where unlimited grace and mercy flows. And we, we, have, we have a high priest that's touched by the feeling our, of our infirmities. Amen? Amen? Can we worship him this morning? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Hannah. Let's continue that today. Can we lift him up and thank him for all that he's done for us? God, we worship you and we thank you for this day. We bless you, Jesus. We've come to lift you up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For this day, we're gathered in your name, singing out to you. Glory like a fire, awakening desire, will build our hearts with truth. You're the we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Filling every part of our praise. In this place, your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky, ascending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord. Unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river Flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you, open up the floodgates, a mighty river, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you 
open up the floodgates a mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our praise we love you jesus we bless you god thank you for all that you do God, we know you're inhabiting this place because of our praises today. We lift you up, Jesus. We bless you, mighty Savior. Thank you, God, for all that you do. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You can be seated if you'd like today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I encourage you to make this song your prayer today. center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it's always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. center of it all. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do Jesus you're the of this church 
Jesus be the center of this church Every knee shall bow And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus Jesus, whoa From my heart, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. I think, I think his ears begin to perk up and we begin to say things like this. But it requires something of us. When we say Jesus be the center, we've got to begin to lay down things. We have to step out and begin to worship and show him, I really want you to be my center. So for just a couple of minutes, can we just take a break and begin to worship him and say, God, I mean it today. I mean it in this moment. I want you to be my center. God, I lay down every fear. God, I lay down every bit of depression, every bit of anxiety, because, God, I need you at the center. God, I lay down my problems at home. I lay down my problems at my job. I need you at the center today. God, I want to build my whole life around you, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus, be the center. God, it is all about you. It is all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you're already doing in this place this morning, Lord. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Just saying the name of Jesus brings deliverance, brings encouragement, brings healing to our bodies. 
emotional healing inside of us. So I encourage you as we go in prayer, if you don't know what to say, say the name of Jesus. You can't say more. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I feel the Spirit of the Lord in this place this morning. I'm excited to be here in this house this morning. Amen. But as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I encourage you to lift up Sister Barb's family. We've been praying for a while for healing, and Sarah and her family lost Sarah this week. She was a young lady, and, and her family, they need emotional healing. And I know that this church will lift her up throughout this week. Amen. We grieve with you this morning. We want to continue to lift up Melissa, Al, Vicki, Missy, Justin, Haas, and Beverly, who are all struggling with cancer. Vicki, we had a report from her, from um, from Sister John. I got a report last night that um, Vicki is having some um, negative side effects from from the treatment that she's receiving. It's affecting her veins, her arms. She's having trouble taking the treatment. There's a lot of things that goes along with some of these treatments that we don't see until you've gone through it, and she's going through those things. So we want to, beyond healing in Vicki's body, we're going to just pray that her body would begin to react better to these treatments that are intended to bring health to her. Amen. We're going to continue to lift up Carol Strange and just pray that God would heal his body. Amen. That God would touch him this morning. And I just, I'm just praying that he would feel the presence of God where he's at right now. That he would be encouraged wherever he's at. We just pray that he would know that he is not alone because he's not alone. We're going to continue to lift up John and Susan this morning. Um, we're going to pray specifically Sister Susan needs a touch of strength in her body. She's uh, She needs energy. She needs strength to move this morning. And we're going to believe that God is going to touch her and move in her body. Do you believe with me this morning? Amen. We continue to believe with Brother Terry Moore that God is going to heal his body. And we're just, amen. We're just going to call out the name of Jesus over Brother Terry today. We're going to continue to pray for Pastor David this morning, who's been struggling and dealing with things actually for the last couple of years. He's got a couple appointments coming up that we're, we're hoping that he gets some, um, some information, something, maybe some changes he can make in his life. But uh, I'm just believing that God can, can heal you this morning, Pastor. Amen. We continue to lift up um, Dixie Crutzinger and David Wooden, both needing healing. <clears throat> Eddie Wheeler, who also needs a touch of God from God this morning. Sherry Wheeler, who needs a, maybe even a little more desperate touch. They've taken her to Evansville. I was reported by Brother Terry um, this week that her condition has gotten worse. She's in the hospital over there. They've moved her. And um, let's just believe that God work is just going to heal her body. Amen. Amen. Let's touch her. Um, and Anthony Williams, we're going to continue to lift up this uh, minister who is on headed to Kuwait. Kuwait, I'm not sure the time frame, but we're just going to believe for safe travels that God's going to protect him. And again, that God's just going to use this minister over there. And if anyone has an unspoken request, I know that. I know some of the unspoken requests. We need a move of God in some of your lives and some of the lives of people who are joining us on Facebook. Raise your hand. We're, we believe that God is able to touch you, even though that you're not in this building, that God can touch you, that God can heal you, that He can deliver you, that He can set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So pray with me this morning as we go. Again, lift up a couple names, but just call on the name of Jesus and believe with me that God is going to move in these people's lives this morning. Amen. Lord, we come to you this morning and we praise you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are already in this place, that you are already moving. And Lord, you are moving because we are amongst a people who love you and worship you and praise your name, Jesus. 
for what you have already done in so many of our lives. Lord, you are a good God and you are worthy of every spoken word of praise that we can offer you this morning, Lord. And as we come to you, Lord, we just pray right now for Sister Barb's family and the loss that they are suffering. Lord, we know that they are hurting, Lord. But we also believe right now that you are able to comfort them, that you are able to come beneath them and help bear this load that they suffer, that you can encourage, Lord, each and every one of them, Lord. We just call on your name today and ask that you would just walk with them in this, Lord. And Lord, we also ask for healing for Bob Rainey, for Cassandra Orgeson, and for Katie Gadness this morning. All members of this same family, all suffering different conditions, all in need of a touch of your powerful hand, and we're believing in Jesus' name, Lord, that you're going to heal each one of them, that you will heal Bob, Cassandra, and Katie today, Lord. And Lord, we also, we want to lift up Melissa, Al, Vicki, Missy, Justin Haas' father, and Beverly, each needing a touch of you, of your hand, Lord, healing from cancer, Lord. We pray that you would just touch Vicki's arms, her veins. We pray that her body would be able to receive these treatments, and we just pray that each each one of them would be strengthened today, Lord. And Lord, we just want to pray for a powerful move, Lord, of your healing hand on the life of Carol Strange today, Lord. Strengthen his body, Lord. I just pray that he would be able to turn his eyes from the condition that he's suffering and that he would be able to, that you would be able to get his attention, that he would be able to look towards you, Lord, and that he would be able to just receive strength in you, Lord, today. And Lord, John and Susan, Lord, we believe, we continue to believe that you are going to complete a thing that you have started in each one of them. Lord, we thank you for every good thing that you've done for them. Lord, we believe that you're going to continue to move in their lives. Lord, that you're not finished with them. Lord, you're going to complete this healing. And today, Lord, today I pray specifically that Susan would just have a jolt of a strengthening in her body, a surge, Lord, of your spirit that would allow her to get up, Lord, that she would be reminded that you are her strength and that she would be able to move on in her day, Lord, the way that she wants to move on with her day. And Lord, we want to continue to believe and speak healing in the, in the body of Brother Terry Moore, Lord. We want to come to you with this same enthusiasm, this same belief that we believe that's already working in Sister Susan. We believe that this is moving right now in Brother Terry. That he right now is feeling different than he was 30 seconds ago because of your, your spirit falling upon his body, Lord. And Lord, we're believing for healing for Pastor David. I thank you that he's able to be with us this morning. Lord, so we praise you for that. We praise you that he's better than he was. But Lord, we're believing beyond what the doctors may tell him. We believe, Lord, that you're able, that he doesn't have to wait till tomorrow when he goes to the doctor. He doesn't have to wait till the 19th till he goes to that doctor. We believe that you're able to heal him today. That you're able to change his condition. To move in his body, Jesus. Lord, we just praise you for what we believe that you're doing in our pastor's body this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we want to thank you for the continued work, Lord, that you are doing and you already done in, in Sister Dixie Crutzinger. Lord, we know that you've been doing things in her life. She testifies to your goodness. And we just pray, Lord, that you continue to show your power over her life so that she can continue to testify, to tell people just how good you are, just how important you are in her life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we lift up the name David Wooden to you, Lord. We pray against the spirit of discouragement. We pray healing over his body. Lord, we pray for every cell in David's body in Jesus' name today. Complete restoration. Lord, we pray for the emotional condition of his family. Lord, that as you begin to move in his life, that their spirits would be lifted and that they would see that you are still the God that they have served for so many years, Lord. And Lord, we want to pray that a healing, a healing over both 
Brother Eddie and Sister Sherry Wheeler both needing a touch in their bodies this morning, Lord. And we're believing you for it, Lord. We don't have anywhere else to go. Lord, we believe it is you that we must come to. And Lord, we believe you want to do it. So Lord, we don't know how bad Sherry is. We don't know how bad Eddie is. But we believe that how, whatever condition they're in, that you are able to heal them today. And we thank you for being the God that you are in their lives today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we want to come to you on behalf of Anthony Williams and his family who's about ready to be separated from him. And Lord, we ask for safe travels as he heads to Kuwait, Lord. Keep a hand of protection over him. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that you would protect him once he gets there, Lord. But Lord, we want to pray for a path this morning that's filled with open doors for this minister to just speak to people of your goodness, this goodness that everyone in this church has experienced, Lord, that he would just be continue to be used over there, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We don't want him to go, Lord, but we thank you for this opportunity that we believe that you have anointed and given him today. And Lord, I want to lift up every person who raised a hand this morning in faith. Lord, they raised that hand because they believe it's an act of faith. They believe that you're able. Lord, you know their needs. You know how to fix it. You know how to speak to us. You know how to give us wisdom. You know how to heal. Lord, when we stand in your presence... Lord, chains begin to rattle off, and we believe that because we've experienced it. You're a God of deliverance. Lord, you're a God of love. You're a God of mercy. And your spirit is heavy in this place, and I love you this morning, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord with a minute for me before Sister Hannah comes up. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You are a good God, Lord. Thank you for coming and being with us today, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we love you today. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. If you'd like to be seated, you can. If you want to stand, you're welcome to as well. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Move in this place, God. Have your will and your way, Jesus. He is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on.
with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Things. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yes, with all creation I sing. To the King of Kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah. You are my everything, and I will adore you. If you feel that way this morning, would you let him know about it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. Come on, if you feel that way about him today, would you offer praise to him? Would you let him know all about it? Hallelujah to the Lord. God, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah to the Lord. We give you praise and glory. We honor you in this house. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You know, all across this world, all day, every day, all week, every week, all month, every month, all year, every year, God's name is taken in vain. He's forgotten, he's neglected, he's abused. And I really, honestly, I believe that, 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 that part of our culture, because we've created church the way that we have, not I understand that the way we do church, it's, you can't find it in the Bible. They, they had to do whatever they could. We're privileged to have church the way we do. So when I say what I'm about to say, it is a reflection of, what I, of how we are and what we do with Christ today. I believe with all of my heart that there are weeks that God waits all week long for his people to come together together in one mind in one accord and just for a couple of hours take a moment and tell him how good he is and strong he is and mighty he is I wonder could you use your voice of praise today and just drown out all of the other negativity he hears all week long would you praise him right now God we give you glory we give you honor in this house we restore you to your rightful place as King of kings and Lord of lords. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I feel the spirit of the Lord trying to break something in this place. Come on, somebody. Just praise him for a moment. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord and shout to him with a voice of triumph hallelujah to the Lord praise the name of the Lord 
Praise the name of the Lord. 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 Hallelujah to the Lord. Are you hungry for him today? Are you hungry for God today? I don't know about you, but I need him. The older I get, the more I realize how I can't do anything without him. I used to I used to laugh. I shouldn't admit this probably publicly, but I remember laughing when that when some of those old timers would sing that song, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. <laughs> but Sister Cisco, the older I get, the more I realize without him, I'm nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard it a long time ago, and I've repeated it a thousand times. It's not original with me, but I, I believe it, and I know it today more than I've ever known it. If it weren't for him, I couldn't catch my next breath in the fastest plane ever created. It is but by the grace of God that we are here today. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mother's Day, Father's Day, always very interesting. Uh, I, I believe I have a word from the Lord. I hope that I can do it justice today. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Exodus, the second chapter. While we're turning there, I would ask you, uh, it is our custom to stand for the reading of the word. I would also just, as your pastor, as your pastor, you've been around here long enough to know when we pray, when we go into prayer, if you're physically able, I'm asking you just to know. Home folk, I guess, I know they don't know. But our home folk, I expect you to stand without Brother Chris or myself having to ask you to stand in reverence for prayer. So would you just please do that with us moving forward? All of our kids, you all need to learn that. When we go to prayer, when we read the word, stand to your feet and be in reverence for those kinds. Of, is that all right? Is it okay? Praise the Lord. Uh, all of our guests today, we want you to know how much we appreciate you. Can we give our guests give our guests a hand? Thank you so much. Thank you all for being with us today. We appreciate that. I know you're not a guest, but it's good to see that ugly mug of yours, young man. I tell you, God bless you and your guests that are with you today. We are so thankful. Happy Mother's Day. I know it's already been said, but what an exciting, glorious day where we celebrate our mothers and uh, I know Brother Dave Pulley thinks he's a stud, but it's really the mother in his household. Amen. That makes life worth living. And Brother Pulley says amen. He talks about her being his queen all the time. So we're just, just going with what I read there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Mother's Day, what an exciting, glorious day. Mother's Day. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope that I can draw some things out today that, because I know that when we talk about Mother's Day, there, there's a lot of conflict, and there are so many people that represent so many things when it comes to mothers. Some of you are mothers because you birthed a child. Some of you are mothers because you inherited that when you came into a relationship. And some of you uh, have had mothers that have been fantastic mothers. and Some of you have had mothers that weren't fantastic mothers. But I believe with all of my heart, that there's a reason, a design, and a purpose for all of us. And I'm hoping that I can draw some of that out today. Exodus, the second chapter. While you're turning there, just a couple of announcements. Men's meeting, May 13th, that's this Thursday. We're trying Thursday nights out, Thursday at 7 p.m. If you're a man in this church and you are able to, I know some of you work and you can't be here, but if you can be here, you need to be at men's meeting. Our overcomers are moving forward. We're seeing some fantastic things. We're going to be talking a little bit more about our men's conference that's coming up in November. Revival. Somebody say revival. revival. May the 16th. That's next Sunday, a week from today, and the following Sunday. Two fantastic preachers, unique in their own way. Reverend Kevin Cox will be with us next Sunday, and then the following Sunday, Reverend Alan Lucas, you will not want to miss these services. As a matter of fact, if you've been waiting for an excuse to invite somebody, if you're afraid to get them here because pastor screams and hollers too loud or too much or goes on too long, these two men, I promise, is a great excuse for you to invite somebody to be here 
You will not want to miss their ministry. Somebody say praise the Lord. Mobile Market is returning May 22nd. We're excited to partner with the United Way. We've got about 400 boxes that we'll be handing out to the community. Uh, if you need those or want those or know somebody that can use those or would use those, please make sure that they come out. And uh, if they've got family that can't get out, they can deliver them. We'll give them more than one box. Uh, but we're extremely excited about that. Also following that directly is our men's work day. All of our men said, woo woo. Hey, that was more exciting than one I thought we were going to get. Uh, the mobile market, please be here. If you're going to be a part of that, please be here by 9 a.m. We need as much help as what we can get. The men's work day will follow. And then also May the 16th is our second Legacy Youth Group Youth Service here at the church. Yes, fantastic. And uh, I think... I think that they, they had a pretty good time the last time. They're expecting a great turnout, and we're looking forward to the pictures and the updates on what comes out of that. I have to tell Sister Cheryl this every time we have youth service, but it's 12 to 8. I'm just kidding. 12 to 18, uh, 5 to 7 p.m. If you're a young person or you have one in your family, you want them to be here, I promise. They're going to have... Uh, they're going to have a great time. And we have gifts for all of our mothers today. If you're a mother, please don't run out without your gift. And then at the end of service, we have three very special gifts that we're going to be handing out. Somebody said, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 2, we're going to begin reading with verse 1. We're going to go all the way down to verse 11. It's not a very long read. Uh, and I encourage you, as we do every Sunday, to read in concert. There's something about reading the Word and hearing yourself read it. So if you don't have your Bible with you, it will be on the screens in front of you. I do encourage you to use that voice and lift it up with us. And it reads like this, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child. Now, I wonder how many of you, when you saw your kids for the first time, thought this is a goodly child. <laughs> I'll be honest, mine looked all, they all looked sketchy, so I was a little concerned. <laughs> She hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Somebody say she knew he was a Hebrew. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. My Lord, does God know how to work things out or what? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the women took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name, <laughs> and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. Now, there are a number of things over this next year in this passage that I think you're going to hear me preach about. And I'm just going to draw a few out of here that I feel God has laid on my heart this morning. We'll talk to you for a few moments from this topic. Lessons from a courageous mother. Last year, we talked about lessons from a desperate mother. This year, we're going to talk about lessons from a courageous mother. I wonder, would you put your Bibles down? Lift your heart, your hands, your voice, whatever you feel. And let's ask the Lord to be with us. God, we're so thankful for this precious day that is set aside to celebrate mothers. God, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have, uh, God, physically and mentally to lift up those that have 
given us life and brought us into this world. We're so thankful, Lord, that we have this opportunity to, to, to pay homage to those who have been so instrumental in raising our children and influential in their life this precious Mother's Day. I pray, God, that you would touch us in a mighty way, that you would speak to us that you would help us. Does anybody need help today? God, I pray that you would help us. Would you make that personal? God, I pray that you would help me today. Help me to understand. Let me receive revelation. I need it every day. God, let me receive revelation that I can be better today and better tomorrow than I was yesterday. In the name that is above every name. I love, absolutely love saying that. It is the name that is above every name. I never get tired of saying it. I never get tired of shouting it. I never get tired of pleading it. The name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Release your power and your spirit in this building today. And we give you praise for it. Would you praise him right now? God, I thank you for what you're going to do in me today. I thank you for what you're going to do in me today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise his holy name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. God bless you. High five your neighbor and tell him it's good to see him in service today. You may be seated in Jesus' name. We jump into a moment in the life of Moses that is critical and, as you can see, a crisis. And I, I love the fact that the Bible does not hide crisis. I, I, don't, need, I don't need a sugar-coated Bible. I'm glad that, you know, that when, when, when the Bible talks about that, you know, when we're babes in the Lord, we, we we find our sustenance with milk, but at some point we've got to grow up and we need to have the meat of the word. I'm thankful in Sunday school that I learned about Jonah and the whale and I learned about Moses you know, leading the children of Israel out of, Is, out of Egypt and I, I'm thankful that I learned all of those just fantastical, incredible, supernatural stories, but I'm also thankful that I've come to understand that the Bible informs me that I can be in the will of God and in trouble at the same time. And that, in, that trouble is not indicative of the fact that I'm not in the will of God. As a matter of fact, I would say more often than not than we find ourselves in trouble, that is most likely when we are in fact in the middle of the will of God. So I, I won't run away from trouble and and, and I don't want to forfeit the will of God for safety. I'm glad that I have a Bible that helps me understand that it is okay that I go through crisis sometimes. Can I get a witness? If, if the Bible was not so picturesque of how great men and great people understood critical situations and despair, and if, 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 it were, if its pages were not filled with men like David and Peter and Paul and even Jesus himself suffering because of life circumstance, I'm not sure that it would be or have the gravitational pull that it does to me today. But we leap into the middle of a family crisis where the whole family, the entire family, is in crisis. And Moses' mother has birthed a child that she can't take care of. Her, her giving birth to Moses was a testimony of the time as it was. There were several of the Hebrew women who were refusing to have children or to get pregnant because of the circumstance that they found themselves in and, and Pharaoh's paranoia. We find them in a crisis where she has birthed a child she can't take care of. We find her in a situation where she is wise enough to do what is best for the child, even if, if it may be against what she would like to do. Can I get a witness? You see, she recognizes her strengths, but she also sees her limitations. She has enough strength in her womb to produce the child, but not enough strength in her community to take care of the child she's produced. Many were the women who succumbed to the Pharaoh's dictates to kill their babies. But this mother was wise enough to preserve the child. And we come into the story at a time where 
She has hidden him in the house as long as she could. The Bible tells us that Moses in this moment, Brother Adam, was only about three months old. Now that's small. He was about three months old and she's held on to him as long as she could and so we find where she's put him in, in the bulrushes and, and has built an ark around him and has let him sail down the Nile in hopes that somebody will see him. Now, our text doesn't do much for the lead-in to Moses being sat in the Nile and carried down the river while his sister is commissioned to run beside him and see what happens and where he ends up. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of painting going on there. It's just left to our imagination, if you will. But our focus today is lessons from a courageous mother. And Moses' mama was courageous. She was a courageous woman and a courageous mother, one who had given birth before. She knew what it was like to have and give birth, but never under these circumstances. She was strong and she was smart and, and successfully birthed her son under the threat of death, knowing not only could she lose her life, but also the life of her son. Moses' birth was so vital to the plan of God and God knew that if Moses' mother didn't birth him, then the promise that he had made to Abraham could not be made complete when he said, your children will sojourn in Egypt for 400 years and afterwards I will bring them out with great sustenance. So God needed a partner and he partnered with Moses' mother just to birth him into the world and she was successful in bringing him in. God says, if you'll push him out, I'll take care of the rest. If you'll just push him into the world, if you'll have the courage to go to the first and the second and the third trimester, if you will have the courage and the strength to fill your lungs with air and push until you break blood vessels in your face and bring him from eternity into time then God says I will partner with you in bringing the mighty into the earth the Bible says in the book of Job in the book of Job that man is born of a woman but but has but a few days of trouble and strife we we must understand that man has to be born of a woman that her womb is the only legal entry into this world Mothers, you need to understand today that you are the gateway from one plateau of existence into the other. You are the gateway. Man is born of a woman. You are the gateway so respected that when God got ready for himself to come into the earth, he had to come through you. The legal entryway from eternity into time was to be born of a woman. And so when God was ready to come into the world, he found a woman named Mary and he said, I'm going to come through you. And like Jesus to Mary, only time would tell what this child would be because of Mo because Moses' mother had no idea she was delivering the baby who would eventually deliver her. And often it's like that. Would you agree for us? We, we just have to have the courage to wait and see what our children are going to be and do like the Bible says and judge nothing before it's time. Not always because sometimes the child who gave you the most trouble will end up being the greatest blessing and I will say amen my mother is not here to testify to that but I'm going to say it anyway sometimes the child who got on your nerves the worst and broke your heart and made you take off work to go down to the school just to break up fights is the child who turns around and will be the one that takes care of and fights for you in your old age But what set Moses' mother apart was not the birthing process. Millions of women had given birth and became mothers. The birthing process was not exclusive to her. Her power, her power came in what she was able to do in a critical moment. 
In the worst kind of circumstance, his mother had to make a decision based on what she knew to be true, that death was surely at their door and that it was time to let him go. We see in our story, and this brings me to our first point this morning, that Moses' mother had the courage to recognize that she had done all she could do and she knew when to let Moses go. You see, a courageous mother always knows when it's time to let go. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to recognize your own limitations, to know you're part of the plan, but you're not the whole plan. And you're not the end all be all of your child's life. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to turn them over to God and say, I, I, I'm turning you over to the hands of God. I, I may, Brother Denny, have started it, but God, you're gonna have to finish it. And she released her children over to the Lord. And in our reading, we find the baby floating down the Nile without his mother. And his sister, the Bible shares with us, is running alongside trying to watch and see if he was safe. Floating among snakes and crocodiles. Now, I don't know how much you know about the Nile, but it is full of aggressive apex predators. Numerous poisonous snakes and crocodiles and hippos and giant tiger fish fill its waters and patrol its banks and so it is with life let me tell you something if you haven't figured this out yet life is filled with trouble and will do all it can to thwart the plan of God in your life the enemy of our soul walks about the Bible says as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour not maim not just leave alongside the road, not take a bite out here and there, but seeking whom he may devour. You see, life is filled with things trying to kill your joy, trying to steal your peace, trying to destroy your faith, and trying to stop your growth. It doesn't matter where you were born or to whom you were born. Life has a way of creating difficulty for all. And Moses' mother takes care to build an ark around her son something to protect him and keep him from the dangers found in his new direction she makes sure that he's protected and that he is in something to keep him afloat you see life is about surviving the circumstances you have to float in I said life is about the circumstances you have to float in. In life, you have to have enough ark around you to ensure that you can swim through the gators and not be bit, to survive the vipers that could destroy you and the hippos that can crush you. But even though his mother does her job in creating what she can to protect him from the things around him, at some point, she has done all she can do and in that moment she has to turn him over to God and what we must realize is in this turning Moses over to God she ends up in a situation where Pharaoh's daughter happened to be bathing and I want you to notice this handoff from Moses' mother to Pharaoh's daughter uh, from, from, from mother to mentor you see Moses' mother could not mentor Moses for his future. You understand that? Because Moses' mother was a slave and she could not mentor him to be a deliverer because she was bound herself. She did not understand freedom. She had no idea what it meant to be on the other side. She was uneducated. As a matter of fact, I would say undereducated. There were things in her life and about her life that would stifle Moses' development. So there had to be something that changed Moses' life for him to embrace the calling that God had on him.
So there had to be a trade-off from the mother to the mentor. And this brings me to our second point today. She wasn't afraid of someone else taking him to the next level. So when the Bible says that Pharaoh's daughter happened to come down to the river to bathe, it is, in fact, a reflection of a transition. And I want to say to every mother, you have to know when to quit. You have to know when to back up and take your hands off of a situation and when to turn the child over to God. You have to know when enough is enough. You have to know when to shut your mouth and when to hold your peace and, and to let God God finished the work that you began. You have to understand that, that you don't hold the whole mystery of who your child is and, and, and that you don't always know who they ought to marry and, and, and that you're not always right about where they ought to move when. And sometimes the wisest thing a good mother can do is just turn their child over to God. We must all understand to really produce greatness, you can't do it by yourself. The old African adage says it takes a village to raise a child. To raise Moses for what he was going to be, he needed more than a slave mother in his life. He also needed a princess who would teach him to walk with his head up and his back straight so he would have enough defiance in him to be able to go before pharaohs and kings and be exposed to the things that slaves would never be exposed to. I would dare say today that some of you did not get everything you needed just from your mother. But God sent somebody who walked beside you and filled in the blanks and made up the difference where that mother left off. And we see Moses' mother pass the torch to Pharaoh's daughter, and she was the gateway into the palace. Moses' mother was the gateway into the world, but Pharaoh's daughter was the gateway into education. She was the gateway into opportunities. She was the gateway into perseverance. She was the gateway into class and dignity and notoriety. She was the gateway into defiance and the right to have an opinion. And what the devil meant for evil, God made it good. And I know that there are some under the sound of my voice who are not mothers in the traditional sense. But if you are a woman and you have access to influence a child's life, let me tell you, you're playing the role of a mother. And sometimes that role is greater than it ever could be had you birthed the child yourself. It was good that Moses didn't get what other people got. Because Moses wasn't going to be what other people were. You see, God will put you in the situation that you needed to be in to make you tough enough in the areas that you need to be tough enough so that you can stand up against life when it seems too challenging to do so. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? Can I talk plain to us today? Stop feeling sorry for yourself over what your mother did not give to you because your mother couldn't give you what she didn't have. Thank God. Thank God for the mothers who understood they could only take you so far in your journey and were willing to expose you to other people who decided to go take a bath while you were crying in the river in despair and pick you up and expose you to a world you would have never experienced any other way. And to God be the glory because it's all good and it's all God. You have to make peace with your story and with your past. Somebody in this place needs to hear your pastor today. I know it wasn't fair. I know you didn't have everything you should have had. I know that it seems like you were left out to dry. But today 
is the day. If you want to be successful, if you want to be blessed, if you want to come into the realization of the calling and blessing that God has for your life, you have to make peace with your past and with your story. You cannot, you have to refuse to spend the rest of your life mad about something you can't do anything about. And in the middle of your despair, you may still be going through it today. You should be able to stand or force yourself to stand and say it's all good. It's all God. Paul said in Romans chapter eight, and we know, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Some people get so mad about the shortfalls of their maternal influence but you have to understand sometimes what you've been born into doesn't offer you everything you need for you to do everything that God has called you to do. For every influence, for every woman that has ever stepped up, for every stepmother, and one of the best you will ever see and know is sitting right here. For all, for all of you, all of those influences that have been placed in your life, you should be thankful for the courage displayed to ensure that you have the best opportunity possible. Those people that came into your life and had no idea who you were or what you were about, that risked everything about themselves, that stuck it out on the rock and pulled you out, knowing what they were doing was against Pharaoh's command. Those people people that stepped out in those dangerous waters and took a chance on you and pulled you out every day. You need to step back and say, thank God for putting that influence in my life and making a way for me to grow and come out from what I would have had. Moses' mother couldn't provide the input needed to make him what he was called to become. Is this okay? But her courage allowed her to release him into a system that would prepare him for levels that she could never take him to. And because Moses had a courageous mother who wasn't afraid of letting go, it produced a moment of power in Moses' life that would change the trajectory of his life and begin the fulfillment of his calling. As a grown man, we see in our scripture that he has a moment, a moment of conflict and discomfort. You understand when you have a moment, I know you know what I'm talking about, that, 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 that moment that rears its ugly head. When you have a moment, it is never comfortable. It's a moment where you're conflicted and, and you're uncomfortable regardless of what you do. And in a situation where you're asking, should I say something or should I just keep my mouth shut? Should I go in there or should I just stay out of it? I'm here to tell you that those defining moments help raise you. And this brings me to my third point and our third lesson today that a courageous mother isn't afraid of defining moments in your life a courageous mother believes that everything she's instilled and allowed to influence in your life will bring out the best of who you are in critical moments of crisis we read the first verse We read in the first, this chapter today, we read the first verse of the change of the scripture leading to where Moses is looking out a window and he sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave and it was in this moment anybody else would have looked out that window and paid no attention. This was commonplace. This happened every day. But Moses 
all of his life had been groomed for the conflict of this moment. Moses didn't see this the way other people saw it because of his background. And I'm telling you, it's not just your mother who raises you. It's not just your village who raises you. It is also those critical moments in your life that raise you. Courageous mothers understand you will have defining moments where who you really are will rise to the surface and you will find out who you really are, why you're really here, and what you're really called to do. There is a moment in your life that will raise you. There's a moment where you will stand up like a full grown man or a grown woman and say, I'm a grown man, I'm a grown woman, and I'm here to do this. There is a moment you have an awakening and come to the realization that I am better than this. I'm better than what everybody else said I was going to be. I'm better than what the world is trying to dictate I'm supposed to do. I'm better than what you say about me. I'm better than my past. It's not enough to have mothers and others of influence. It's not enough to have villages if you don't have the wisdom to recognize your moment. You will miss your calling because your moment is what defines you. A courageous mother knows that they can't give you everything you need to survive, but they and a village, they and others are going to have to contribute to your package, getting you to a place where you will be discovered in your moment. Your moment defines you often in chaos and often in conflict and often in discomfort and often in scandal. Those moments, how you deal with that moment will determine who you are. I've had moments in my life and I know there are testimonies under the sound of my voice where there was something that just stood up inside of you. You, you couldn't point your finger to where it was coming from. You, 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 you tried and you tried to think through all of the scenarios. Whoa, where did this come from? I, I didn't know I had this inside of me. There are all of us, I would say today, who have had moments where something you didn't recognize stood up inside of you that you didn't even know that you had. I wonder, is there anybody in here today that has ever had a moment that drew something out of you that was hidden way down deep inside of you and you didn't know I can talk like this. You didn't know I could walk like this. You didn't know I could write like that. You had no idea that was down on the inside of you but in a critical moment, in a fiery furnace in a place of despair, in a place of hurt and harm, in a place where nobody else was, that something came out In a moment, I hate to burst some bubbles, but you're not a man because you have hair on your chest. You're not a man because you can help make a baby. You're not a woman because you have a shape and a figure and can get anybody you want to get with you. You won't be a woman and you won't be a man until you get in a moment and you say, hang on just a second. And in that moment you have an awakening, an epiphany as to what really matters in your life. Today you should recognize the moments that have defined you. And the courage of mothers who have allowed you to face them on your own. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but I have no doubt in this crowd today.
If I said how many of you had an experience with your mother that was underwhelming, there would be hands that go up. If I said, hey, let's raise our hands for people who've experienced mothers that weren't real good at it, I think there'd be hands that go up. If I asked, hey, let's all raise our hands for those who feel like mom just didn't love you enough, there would be hands that go up. If I said that, hey, let's raise our hands for, for those that feel like mama neglected you, I think that there would hands go there would be hands go up mama doesn't understand me mama never loved me mama never took care of me the way other mothers took care of their children i'm here to tell you god recognizes all of that and and in some of those most of those cases it might have been because of their own failure it might have been because of drugs it might have been because of alcohol it could have been because of their own past for some reason they were only able to produce so much but I'm here to tell you that God is always there. Anytime you come to the realization, mama could only bring me so far. I'm at a place where I need God to help me pick up the pieces. And I'm telling you, there will come a moment in your life, in your darkest hour when you feel defeated and you feel in despair and things are going to come up in you and out of you that you never realized were there because all along where mama couldn't do it God was making sure you had influence to make it and you are going to overcome because what God put in your life and that moment Out of the chaos and the smoke and the confusion of being who you are, there comes a moment that defines you. You could have screwed up everything else. But if you get this moment right, you could have messed up all of your life. But if you get this moment right, it doesn't matter what you did yesterday because you can effectively change tomorrow. I want somebody to know today that you cannot change what you did yesterday. It does not matter. You cannot change what you did last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago. Your past is your past. Let it go. Let it go. You can only stand on what you are doing Right now. This was Moses' moment. If he blew this moment, the whole story is gone. His whole purpose for being in the earth is predicated on how he handles this moment. And Moses says, hang on a second. As he looks out the window, read the story as he reflects on himself. Hang on a second. I'm the boy you're beating. He comes to himself and he stands up in that moment and graduates from one level to the next. In the moment of crisis, he embraces the definition God had for him and all that he was called to be in his moment. Something was drawn out of him that he didn't even know that was in him. And I want to talk to every person in this service who's having a moment, who's in a tough situation, a complicated circumstance. I want to speak 
speak to every person who wonders, am I big enough to handle what's been thrown on me? I'm here to testify to you today that this moment is going to draw out of you stuff that you never knew you had. I want to speak to every person who's dealing with a situation where you feel surrounded, scared, and nervous, and everything is on the line, and you could lose it all, and you're dealing with a moment that is pulling out of you stuff that you didn't know you had. I want you to know that God is on your side. God is on your side. And the Bible says he will never put on us more than we can bear. Can I talk to us? I'm almost done. Don't be afraid of the moment God has put you in. I'm hoping someone in this service today squares their shoulder back, their shoulders back and determines that this is not the end. Can I get a witness? I'm hoping that there is somebody in this service today who is willing to say in this moment, that I refuse to allow this to may have a negative impact on my day. I'm hoping someone in this service squares their shoulders, lifts their heads, and says, this is my moment. The three Hebrew boys were defined after the fire. Not before. It was their moment that propelled them into the blessings of God. And I want to encourage somebody today to embrace your moment and realize that you are here for such a time as this. Many, and I've been around this a long time. Is this okay? There are still people who suffer from mommy issues and daddy issues who never fail, who never realize or come into the understanding that where mom and dad left off, God made sure that you had access to things you never would have had access to had you drifted off down that path. What Moses didn't realize was the courage of his mother set him up for such a time as this. He didn't realize everything she poured into him was about to be brought to the surface and help him transform to the man that he was supposed to be. See, she thought she was done. She said, if I keep him here, he's going to die. I'm going to take a chance and put him in God's hands. And she put him in God's hands. Pharaoh's daughter picked him up. One of the handmaidens said, hey, you can't make sure that he's got what he needs to eat. You want me to go down and find a Hebrew woman that can take care of this for you? And they went knocking on the, on the door of his mama's house. And what the mama gave away because he's going to die. She had done all that she could. The one that was after him put him right back in mama's. God said, I'm glad that you're gonna learn and have the education. I want you to know how to speak to kings and pharaohs. I want you to know and have the gravitas that is needed. But while you're learning all that, I'm gonna make sure that you're still in touch with mama. I don't ever want you to forget where you came from and why you're so special because ultimately that's why I put you here. 
While he was, uh, while he understood protocol and position and power and favor, while he understood palace living and education and business, the lessons from his courageous mother flooded his life and birthed in him the courage to embrace everything that he was called to be. Lessons from his courageous mother show us everything he was and would become was only because of her courage to let him go. To allow input from others beside herself. And that her courage to do these things would protect and lead him to his moment if she would have kept him he would have died if she would have taken him from Pharaoh's daughter he would have died if she didn't have the courage to do all she did the Israelite people would never have had a savior again I know on this Mother's Day there are those battling with all kinds of things and I know the heaviness of what some of us carry but God has been stirring things in your life since before you could even understand. Some of you have even wondered why things went the way they did and, and what good could come out of my circumstance but God wants you to know there are things working on your behalf and have been ever since before you could understand and we're creating a path to victory in your life and I'm closing some of you have been through hell and high water wondering what could come out of hurt and neglect wondering how will I ever be able to rise above with the restrictions I had in childhood I want you to know today undoubtedly God had you in his hands the entire time. Brother Sackman, I'm reminded today of that old Sunday school song. He's got the whole world in his hands. Sister Barb, the Bible says he knows every sparrow that falls. Now, some of us, it's easier than others, but Pastor David, he knows the hair that we have on our head. You don't think that God knows how many hairs you have on your head and then he's somehow forgotten you. The whole time, this whole time, regardless of what you've been through, I want you to know that God has been working on your behalf. when you were sent down the river all by yourself. When you were picked up by hands that were unfamiliar and right now standing in the defining moment of your life. God has been there all the time. I wonder if we have any courageous people here today who are willing to just turn it to God and trust the path that he has told us we are to travel God I, I don't understand he's only three months old I've never built a boat before you understand God I, I, if he dies here at least I'll, I'll be able to see it and I will know what happens to him if, if I build this and it's faulty and he drowns or the crocodiles or the hippos or the tiger fish or the pythons or the other snakes whatever it is if they get him I, I'll never know but I'm going to trust God and believe that when I let it go that God is going to do everything that I couldn't to make sure that in that situation that it comes out
better than it ever would had I kept my grip on it. Pastor, what can you tell me that will encourage me? Let me tell you, God has never lost track of where you are. And regardless of your history, he's sewn it all together in the quilt of your life for your benefit. Don't run from the call of God. Moses' mother allowed the call of God to be fulfilled in the most unusual way. But when Moses came to his moment, he was able to stand to his feet and do what he had to do. For many today, this is your moment. Everything that you have been prepared for has been preparing you for this moment. Everything that you've been through, every mountain you had to climb, every rock you stumbled across, every time you bruised your knee and scuffed your hands has been preparing you for this moment. I may be 46 years old, but this is my my moment. I may be 78 years old, but this is my moment. I may be 15 years old, but this is my moment. I may be 24, but this is my moment. I may be 55, but this is my moment. Let it go and let God. Would you stand to your feet? Let it go. Let those who can elevate you, show you a path. You weren't built with access to. Because in your moment, you will rise to the occasion. And God is going to draw out of you things that you never thought possible. Lessons from a courageous mother. From certain death to life. From powerless to empowered. From slave to deliverer. Moses was everything he was because of what a courageous mother allowed God to do in his life. What an incredible path. Somebody in this building today has been going through stuff and you've been thinking about how you can keep it together all by yourself. You've kept yourself up at night, tears streaming down your face. You can't sleep and when you do, it's restless. Because you're trying to make it all make sense in your life. You can't see how Pharaoh's daughter could bring him right back to you. You can't see how letting him go at such a young age, trusting God in the process, can take that thing, put you in a moment, designed to pull you out, create in you and for you, everything he's called you to be. I'm telling you, trust in the Lord. I wonder, would you raise your hands today? Lift your face toward heaven so God can see that beautiful face of yours. And just ask him, Lord, I need your help. God, there are uncanny things or unusual things that have happened in my life and so much of it I, I haven't understood. As a matter of fact, I feel like so much of it has messed me up. Like I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm fighting with the wrong things. But pastor just told me that all things work together for good. That I should know that. So God, I'm gonna trust you today. I'm gonna trust you today in the word that you provided. I'm going to believe with everything that is within me that everything that I have been through will be turned around. What the devil meant for evil, 
will be made for good in every aspect of my life, every ounce of turmoil and confusion and abuse and, and, and every ounce of, uh, of pain and hurt and neglect and, and affliction. God, I'm going to believe with all of my heart that it is going to work for the good because I am in you. God, I pray right now in Jesus' name all across this building that you would release the power of your spirit. God, I pray in your name that you would come down in the midst of every single moment. There are people all across this building. God, I believe every person under the sound of my voice is in the middle of their moment and they're wondering how am I going to make it through and out of this? God, I pray in your name. Let all of those things that you've been stirring and hiding and developing in them all these years, God, I pray, let it boil up, let it come up, let it come to the surface. And in this moment, God, I pray in your name, Jesus, release your power and freedom in the name. Come on, somebody ask it right now. Somebody pray it right now. Hallelujah. in this place all I want oh yes meet me here again Jesus I'm not enough yeah my God my God so I want, so you are, will you meet me here again, Jesus, Jesus, this is your moment, this is your moment, I release what's inside of you for you to have your moment. I don't know who I'm prophesying to right now, but I prophesy to you that this is your moment. Let it out. Come on. Let it come out of you. In the name of Jesus, grab a hold. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Give me you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Else can wait. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Hallelujah. Lord, give me you. Jesus. Lord, give me you. Jesus. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not Jesus. Lord, give me you. Jesus. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Jesus. Cause it's me. one more time all across this building if we could just for the next 30 seconds give God a great praise come on would you make a joyful noise unto the Lord hallelujah yes come on somebody praise him hallelujah God I thank you for what you're doing in me I thank you that all things work together. God, I thank you that you brought me to my moment. Other people said you can't survive. You'll never make it. You'll never be that. But God, I want to thank you. Thank you for my moment. Yes, Jesus. Here I am. I'm still standing. I'm in the house of the Lord with my hands raised, tears streaming down my face. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Would you clap your hands to the Lord? A great clap. And just offer a shout to him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Chapter 2, verse 23, And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by the reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. Chapter 3, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest, Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse 6, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face and was afraid to look. And the Lord said, I surely have seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Verse 10, Moses, come now. (laughs) Therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people out of Egypt. Lessons from a courageous man. Let it go. Don't be afraid of other people elevating. And recognize and embrace your moment. Somebody said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Facebook, we love you so much. Thankful that you were here with us today. God bless you. We will see you on Wednesday night.